No, we are it's hearing good. it all right. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's good. Yes. I'm going to go. Okay, Ashish. So we are starting with the program now. Okay, so I'm starting. Oh, sir, I'm starting, sir. Oh, you're starting. Yes. A very good morning, everyone. I'm Pooja Shukla, Assistant Director with the National Board for Quality Promotion, QCI, and I welcome you all to our 21st virtual quality conclave, which is being jointly hosted by Quality Council of India and Safe in India Foundation. As you all are aware, QCI quality conclaves are organized around contemporary themes to help the industry, consumers and other stakeholders understand challenges and opportunities better and adopt the best practices in quality, safety and technology to strengthen the quality ecosystem. In line with the same, the theme of this conclave is workplace safety in MSMEs enhances productivity. Friends, according to the International Labour Organization, ILO, some 2.3 million men and women around the world succumb to world-related accidents or diseases every year, which corresponds to over 6,000 deaths every single day. Worldwide, there are around 340 million occupational accidents and 160 million victims of work-related illness annually. With respect to India, as per the various reports in 2021, the industrial accidents leads to the death of 162 workers. These figures indicate how seriously the workplace safety needs to be looked at. Further, when it comes to MSMEs, we are all aware that the MSMEs are the backbone of economy and their contribution to the nation's growth is vital. In our country, majority of the MSMEs are micro and small that keep on struggling with their day-to-day -day operations, trying to fulfill the demands of the customer, arranging finances, and so on. With all these challenges, even a single workplace accident can derail entire operations, severely impacting the livelihood of the people involved, and therefore, it is vital to create a wider awareness on workplace safety amongst MSMEs as it will not only help in reducing workplace accidents and saving uh, previous lives, but also enhance productivity and efficiency. Our today's conclave will witness deliberations on this very important subject of workplace safety in MSMEs and how addressing this can enhance productivity. Before we move ahead, I would like to announce that the questions will be taken up at the end. You may type your questions in the chat box and these will be announced during Q&A session. With this, let me introduce Mr. C.K. Biswas, CEO NBQP QCI for the welcome address. Mr. C.K. Biswas is the CEO of NBQP board, a constituent board of QCI. He is 1985 batch BTEC mechanical engineering gra graduate with over 30 years of experience in the field of supply chain management, quality and environment management. He is uh, leading a young team of quality enthusiasts at NBQP to promote the concept of quality across sectors, including MSMEs, Pan India through awareness training program, quality improvement projects, award schemes, publication and events such as quality conclaves and competitions. May I now uh, invite Mr. Biswas for the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Well, thank you uh, very much, Pooja, for this introduction. Uh, a very good morning to you all. It's indeed a pleasure to be here amongst an August gathering. I'm CK Vishwas, representing the National Board for Quality Promotion, Quality Council of India, New Delhi. On behalf of NBQP and NABIT QCI, I extend a very warm welcome to the eminent dignitaries, our distinguished moderators and speakers of the technical sessions, Mr. Sanjeev Sasteva, Mr. I.V. Rao, 
मिस्टर सुदीप्ता भात्रा मिस्टर मुकुल भाटिया मिस्टर सुमित रॉय एंड डॉक्टर इंद्रजीत भट्टाचार्य आई ऑल्सो वेलकम द एस्टीम डेलीगेट्स and representatives from the state and central government associations chambers councils to this conclave organized jointly between nabet and bqp and safe in india the national board for quality promotion and bqp is an integral board of the quality council of india which was incepted in january 1997 uh, by our founder members cii asokan fikki as well as dpit it was earlier termed as national quality campaign and later as nbqp in february 2007 it is dedicated for promoting quality primarily in the manufacturing come service sectors with a mission statement of to be a catalyst for the promotion of quality movement amongst all stakeholders the board organizations the board organizes sorry Uh, quality conclaves, workshops, awareness programs, webinars, and quality month competitions. UCI has instituted various award schemes like UCI DL Shah Quality Award, uh, UCI Champion Award, and I've also partnered with entities like EPC India, etc., to execute their quality award scheme, thereby motivating the industry to upgrade and enhance their processes through the application of appropriate quality tools and techniques. Uh, this board also provides technical support to both central state government departments and PSUs in implementing ISO 9001, 50001, 45001, etc., as well as in undertaking process improvement projects through Kaizen Lean 5S methodology. Uh, it is also engaged in assessments in various fields. It also operates schemes for registration of consultants, auditors, and management system courses, uh, as well as professional memberships. now uh, regarding the other boards uh, this is the structure that at the top we have this council then we have the governing board and below that is a secretary general supported by secretariat and we have the four accreditation boards nabcb nabet nabh and nabl of which uh, i'll be describing uh, briefly below below nabcb is a board which accredited certification and inspection bodies as per iso and other international standard requirements which are internationally recognized through multilateral mutual recognition arrangements mlas and mras of iaf ilac and apac nabet provides accreditation to eoms certification bodies schools consultant organizations etc it provides services in ensuring quality of skill vocational sectors and of consultants involved in environmental impact assessment nabl provides accreditation to testing cap calibration and medical laboratories reference material producers and proficiency testing produce providers based on international standards it operates accreditation programs in accordance with the requirements of iso iec 1711 NABH provides accreditation to healthcare organizations like hospitals, blood banks, community public healthcare centers, Ayush hospitals, etc. Provides certification programs for medical laboratory. NABH is a member of the Accreditation Council of International Society for Quality in Healthcare. Hmm? Through this conclave, which has been jointly organized by NABET and NBQP along with Safe in India, we will strive to increase understanding of the participants. and also enhance quality of life in various ways the primary objective of the conclave is to apprise the government regulators industry manufacturers and consumers about the significance of the uh, uh, health and safety and uh, which will uh, become a uh, strength for the quality infrastructure of the country today's topic is workplace safety in msme enhances productivity we are all aware that implementation of healthy working conditions creates positive impacts on economic and social development as well as a safe working conditions safety management practices are inadequate in most smes which are the main pillars of an economy as per the data of the msme ministry about 89% of the industries are micro enterprises 
these micro enterprises are operating with very limited resources in terms of funds, facilities and space. With old and outdated machinery, limited manpower, awareness and knowledge about safety. Also minor accidents, economic problems have created a need for implementation of safety practices in SMEs. As per the experience, most of the micro enterprises are not able to fulfill basic safety requirements. This is a big concern for human safety. Appropriate knowledge and financial support to these organizations is a need of the hour. <laughs> Industrial accidents can be reduced to effective preventive measures by hazard assessment, good housekeeping, training and better PPE. To develop a good safety culture, the attitude of the workers need to be reoriented by adopting best practices, good housekeeping and changes in work culture and work practices. Industrial accidents are common in India as in many other developing countries. Prediction of various types of accidents helps owners and managers to formulate organizational policies for improving safety performance. Unlike the organized sectors, MSMEs are not equipped with sophisticated technology, structured environment, or safety and health practices. Often in an MSME, workers need to work in adverse working conditions. This leads to accidents, injuries, and product loss. Every employee has responsibility towards, sorry, every employer has a responsibility towards each employee to ensure that the employee while at work is safe from injury and risk to health. This will also help in the reduction of loss of production manners and damage to machinery equipment. Top management is responsible for the implementation of safety enhancing systems and the development of safety oriented culture to enhance safety consciousness. Periodic in-house safety programs with systematic Assessments would help in improving the culture. So to sum up, basically the market competitiveness, better efficiency, less risk, and stringent laws were found to be most significant as drivers. Whereas financial constraints, lack of awareness, resistance to change, and lack of training for employees were found to be the main barriers. So on any initiative, the end objective to, uh, should be to improve the quality of human life while being continuously competitive, boost trade and economy of the country in an Atma Nirbhar, make in India and vocal for local scenario. And uh, today we have very interesting sessions uh, with uh, very eminent speakers. And I would request all of you uh, to remain uh, in this program till the end of it and uh, give your feedback so uh, that we can improve on these programs in future. Thank you very much. Um, I apologize for the time that I've taken uh, and I hand it over to Pooja. Thank you, sir, for the welcome address. Uh, moving forward, let me introduce Mr. Sandeep Sachdeva, CEO and co-founder Safe in India Foundation for the introductory address. Mr. Sachdeva is an international banker who, after leading large global banking businesses in three continents, retired in his mid-40s to pursue his personal interest. He has since co-founded Safe in India Foundation, his chief passion and is its current CEO. He is a graduate of IIT Roorkee and an MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. May I now invite Mr. Sachdeva for his introductory address and taking the conclave ahead. Mr. Sachdeva would also moderate the session. Over to you, Mr. Sachdeva. Thank you so much, Pooja, and thank you, Mr. Vishwas. I'm delighted to be here along with my team, uh, who's also here, especially Chitra Khanna, who's our head of safety. And I have to thank Ministry of MSME, uh, QCI, uh, and all of the participants here to, uh, to, to come together on this important subject, as Mr. Vishwas talked about. Our aim for today is really to help MSMEs who are here and broader 
to really appreciate this connection between occupational safety and health productivity and quality. Now we are launching this series of seminars with QCI. This is the first one. Uh, and depending on the questions of the interest today that come, we will arrange a series of these with, with QCI. So we are looking forward to future webinars too. And as Mr. Biswas said, we need your support to really get feedback to understand what we can do after this. Now, why are we doing this? I think uh, both Pooja and Mr. Biswas laid out. Safe in India Foundation has been helping injured workers in Gurdaw, Faridabad, and increasingly nationally, especially in auto sector supply chain. In just last year, we found more than a thousand workers injured just in Gurdaw and Faridabad. This country's number is obviously huge. Now, these are not just human miseries. This is also an indication of the need to improve the production standards and the quality standards in our businesses, in our MSMEs. Indian manufacturing sector, of which auto sector is roughly half, really needs to think long term. And we need to think long term together. And the reason for that is very simple. As we all understand, the global competition is increasing day by day. The new geopolitical environment is forcing it even more, right? We have heard about ESG movements, environment and sustainability movements, which are gathering momentum. A number of global brands, uh, and I speak to a number of them, are, in, are actually increasing their attention on ESG, and they are actually reducing their supply chains. A number of them are reducing their supply chains. Now, when they reduce their supply chains and suppliers, there's going to be a pressure in retaining the better businesses and either improving or shedding the businesses which are not complying with the future requirements. We have all heard of Rana Plaza in Bangladesh where after the fire, the global industry got together and uh, the approximate data is that of the 5,000 factories that were supplying to these global brands, only 3,000 remained. The 2,000 factories stopped getting business. So this is an important driver of business in the coming future that we all need to understand, right? Now, clearly, as everybody knows, and we all think that investing in safety, is it a cost or is it an investment? Is it just a cost? So today we have a number of speakers who will try answering some of these questions, but this is a longer debate and we need to keep building upon what happens today. And I would therefore request you to give feedback here in the chat box or later at our email ID team at safeinindia.org to tell us what else we can do to make you do, uh, you know, run your businesses better. We are here to help. The questions that we'll pose roughly, and we, we all have in our minds, are something like, what is the cost of safety? Does better worker safety actually lead to better quality or better productivity? Is safety just a cost or an investment? At Safe in India, our experience shows, and we have limited experience, shows that actually in India right now, the baseline is so low on working conditions that the first 30, 40, 50% of the accidents can actually be reduced profitably. We are not at a global standards yet in MSMEs where every accident reduction costs a lot of money. That is 10, 20, 30 years from now, frankly, right? So we are at this beginning of this journey uh, uh, and, and I think we need to think harder about how we can actually improve safety, improve working conditions, and at the same time, improve business. So we have a number of great speakers today that we have curated for you. Mr. I.V. Rao is ex-Maruti Chief Engineer and Director. He will talk about how safety and quality are connected. We have Ms. Sudipta Bhadra from ILO who ran their SCORE program. And again, ILO's program of SCORE was taken across the country to improve a number of businesses on all these criteria together. We have uh, uh, Mr. Mukul, who's coming after Sudipta to talk about their own factory and what they did with SCORE program and how they made improvements, which were also good for business. And as a result, you know, they, they, they not only won awards, it was good for their business. Mr. Sumit Roy from uh, DG Fastly, which is central government safety arm, will talk about how machine maintenance is good for business. And last but not the least, the immediate speaker after me is Dr. Indrajit Bhattacharya, who will talk about lean manufacturing and its benefits, right? So my request to you is the same as Mr. Biswas. Please engage with the program. Please put your comments, good, bad, ugly. We need all those. Please don't shy away from telling us this works, this doesn't work. Do more of this, do less of this. What should be in the future programs to take this forward for you and your teams, right? So please put that in the chat. There'll be a survey at the end. Fill that survey, please, for us. And 
finally, if you have any suggestions for us in bringing more valuable speakers here that you know of, more experts here that you speak of, please write to us again at team at safeinindia.org and we will try, we will talk to them, we'll try getting them on. So I will stop here and I will hand over to Dr. Bhattacharya who's going to talk about lean for the next 15 minutes. If he uh, stops in about 10 minutes, we can take a couple of questions. Otherwise we'll take questions in the end. I will moderate the session. I'll quickly introduce Dr. Bhattacharya. He's currently the director at NABET QCI, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. He has over 30 years of varied experience across industry, government, academia. Presently, he's steering lean manufacturing comp competitive scheme of Ministry of MSME for driving quality in the MSME sector. He holds a degree in electronics and communication engineering and MBA, PhD from Birla Institute of Technology, Ranchi. Further, he's a fellow of Institute of Electronics and Te uh, Telecommunication Engineers and member of PhD CCI Education Committee. So Dr. Bhattacharya, welcome, and I leave you here for the next 10 to 15 minutes. Thank you. So thank you very much, Sandeep, for that uh, elaborate uh, uh, introduction. So let me take you through my slides. But before that, I would like to invite a small video. Uh, Ashish, can you load the video? So this video is about uh, the duration uh, of which this scheme was implemented by QCI from the period of 2014 to 2019. Ashish. Yes, sir, I'm sharing the video. The development Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, DCMSME, Government of India, is implementing the Lean Manufacturing Scheme for the benefit of micro, small and medium enterprises. Under the scheme, clusters are being formed comprising of 6 to 10 units, wherein Lean consultants implement various lean tools and techniques depending on the need and requirement of industry for a period of 18 months. Fees of lean consultant is being subsidized in the scheme. 80% fee of lean consultant is being borne by Government of India, while 20% cost of lean consultant needs to be borne by industry. QCI and NPC have formed 482 clusters and conducted 715 awareness programs pan-India. The MSMEs who have adopted lean manufacturing are reaping benefits from it. It is not only a technique, but a business philosophy which has proven highly successful since it can reduce costs, eliminate waste, increase productivity, maintain high levels of quality and thus make a significant increase in profits of the MSMEs, making them economically stronger and hence making India stronger. Lean manufacturing investment 100% gain. Thank you, Ashish. Welcome. So I will just take you through my slides. Just give me a moment. So are my slides visible? Can anybody yes. confirm? Hmm, okay. Yes, so I'll take you through the benefits of lean manufacturing in the scheme of MSME. As I said, the period was 2014 to 2019. So starting with the uh, uh, definition of lean, it is removal of the non-value items in manufacturing. And the uh, Toyota brings about these three terminologies in Japanese, which is Muda, Mura and Muri, which is uh, Muda stands for waste, Mura stands for fluctuation, in the uh, various activities and MURI stands for overburden. The lead principles are defining the value, mapping the value stream, creating a flow and establishing a pull 
rather than a push which rather ha which happens in the industries creating a pull in the manufacturing system and always pursued perfection that means lean is never a mild uh, uh, completion it is always a journey it will keep on happening and improvement will be keeping on happening uh, uh, throughout that manufacturing journey so these are the eight forms of waste which happens in lean which are, which has been as i Dr. said Dr. Uh, Charya, can i interrupt your slides are not moving but i am moving it at my end oh i see then ashish will need to do something okay sorry sir carry on can anybody else confirm whether i am i am on my third slide right now no can it's anybody? the same problem everywhere I'm... no sir it's no, it not, not it is not moving so i have moved my slide so so what you can do is just uh, close it whoever is displaying it just close it and open it again it might take shall i stop uh, stop sharing status no, shall just, i stop i think you can reach yes, that whoever is sharing shall i stop sharing and do it again yes sir please okay yeah Now, can you see my slide? I'm on the third slide. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. Can you confirm whether it, it is moving? Yes. It is on okay. the third slide now. No, Eight I have moved moves. the slide also. Is it moving no, or not sir, moving? No, it's not moving, sir. So, then what happens? Let me check, sir. Hello. Hello. Slide show ring hai. Wait, wait, wait. Abi. Just move it. I think it's moving now. Just, just see. Just. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's moving now yeah it's okay you can continue great yeah can you see the slides now yes sir okay fine so there are eight forms of waste as you see can see in the slide uh, it's waste due to transport, due to inventory, due to motion, that is due to unnecessary movements, due to various waiting time delays, due to overproduction, uh, making too much of, or too many, overprocessing, that is duplicating or redundancy operations, defects which are caused during the production, and skills, that is the if the right skilled person is not at the right place, then uh, this that is a waste and so these needs to be removed so what are the benefits of uh, implementation of lean which is improving the quality eliminating waste reducing the cycle time reducing total cost and enhancing the resource efficiency thereby improving workplace safety in every of every activity so if we go a little deep and see what are the techniques actually doing it is doing the reduction in rejection rates reduction in product and raw material movements production cost optimizing the space utilization as well as resources like water energy natural resources etc enhancing the quality in product and process production and export capabilities knowledge and skill sets innovative and in, uh, ensuring innovative work culture social and environmental accountability profitability creating introduction and awareness to various uh, waste management principles and digital empowerment all leading to workplace safety which has aspects of safety training knowledge of tools experience bringing in the various kind of safety measures which needs to be in place uh, 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 give the various uh, aspects of regulations insurance health as well as protection 
these are some of the tools which are shown here uh, lean tools uh, which is 5s visual control bringing in standard operating pr principle uh, procedures just in time principle kanban cellular layout value stream mapping poka yoke or mistake proofing single minute exchange of dice total productive maintenance kaizen and kaizen blitz and uh, more tools have been added it has gone to 18 plus tools which includes the let us say tools like fema which is failure mode effect analysis uh, jidoka which is automation or low cost automation and hijunka which is removing unevenness in production process so uh, the after implementation of lean uh, what has been observed is reduction in work in progress higher productivity has been achieved quality improvements improved customers customer satisfaction reduced cost enhancing profitability increasing overall equipment effectiveness reduced space requirements increased overall equipment effectiveness and reduced wastages and overall improving enhanced enhancing the safety the quantitative figures are towards the end which i'll show now i'll take you through few case studies the first one is at pragati founders kolapur in uh, maharashtra where, where a layout change of, of 5s was done you can see the core shop and the core assembly located with a traveling cost of 128 meters showing in yellow in the left side figure uh, which was the measures were taken as tools for like 5s bsm were implemented reducing the travel time from 128 meters to 30 meters thereby uh, benefiting in terms of rent cost reducing the uh, cost savings of helpers and foremen improving safety thereby and uh, reducing the trips uh, and savings by applying single piece flow reducing defects and having a annual savings of over 792000 per annum so you can see before and after change uh, of all these uh, changes which was uh, made due to uh, 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 the transportation and bringing the, uh, the production places closer. The second one, this is the, the uh, uh, testimonial by the director showing that uh, 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 the, how much of savings it did uh, during the manufacturing. From a loss making minus 3%, it went to a profit of 12% with implementation of lean. This is a case two in Delhi, uh, Oriental Engineering Works in Yamunanagar, where just-in-time principle was used. And uh, this was a heat treatment uh, savings. And this uh, graph shows that before and after uh, heat treatment, uh, how much of the uh, monetary savings has happened. And obviously, this has led to workplace safety because the, the workers were uh, exposed to less heat and uh, uh, and costs were also saved. This is the third case in case of uh, Gurugram in Atma auto tech sector. A cellular layout principle was impaired, done here where the, in the opportunity where, where two operators were being used to operate two different machines. Measures were taken to do a layout change as per the material flow. And one operator works on both machines in tandem, uh, thereby reducing the manpower cost, factory floor saved, reduction in work in process inventory as well as improved savings this was the cost savings which is shown here as 173880 this is the third one uh, which is at motherson tools and the uh, tool used was smed single minute exchange of time uh, of dice change over time reduction happened here uh, where the working conditions if you see on the left hand side was unsafe uh, where a new tool arrangement was taking too much time and the old tool removal was also much more between each batch a solid block arrangement was made in house for the machine and uh, removal of the old tool was made it more easy and safer so besides the cost savings there was improved work safety that happened this is the fifth case study at the govel rubbers faridabad haryana where hot components were kept in one bin, which led to deformation besides unsafe conditions with the measures taken of putting them on rack as designed here, quality besides safety improved. This is the sixth one, uh, again at Faridabad, uh, lean cluster, where the tools were getting damaged on bare floor and retrieval time was high. 
the tool stack rack was fabricated, which led to reduced chances of tool damage, accidents, and improved workman safety besides stress, reduction of stress. Seventh one is happened in Lumax in Delhi. The problem was the you can see again it is shown here in the figure itself where the exposed stripped wires were kept, which was uh, a proper preservation system was, has been made for the stripped wires and the results were quality improvement, cost savings besides improved workman stress. This is the Lumax in Haryana. Uh, the before, whereas there were no dice center ring was provided, resulting into high change over time for setting the die. Proper die center ring was provided. The measures were taken, and the results were uh, you can see the reduction in time besides reduced workman stress. So this is one uh, testimonial from the uh, uh, owner of the uh, factory uh, giving the benefits of clean. These are the cost savings that happened, which shows in micro, small and medium enterprise, uh, a total of 768 uh, units completed the journey with an average investment of uh, 2.4 crores. A total cost fee was shown here as 26 crores and total savings was about 200 crores with the consultant's fee per unit as 3.5 lakhs and a return on investment per consultant led to seven times. Thank you very much. So I think uh, with that, you'll get, you will get must have got a perspective of what Lean has done. And we look forward for phase two from the Ministry of MSME. Over to Puja or Sandeep. I will take care of it. Thank yeah. you so yes. much, Dr. Great. Bhattacharya. That was really good. I learned a few things too. And it's really great to see the highlight at the end of how, uh, you know, safety and all these things can be looked at cost. But if looked like an investment, you get this return when you have the right people looking at the right problems. So I think that's a message that I would carry. And I would request the the, the participants here really to think more about it and reach out to get these 18 plus tools that you're talking about, Dr. Bhattacharya. That's really nice. Thank you. I'll introduce the next speaker, which is Mr. Ivy Rao, uh, who will come and talk about the connection between uh, worker safety and quality. Mr. Ivy Rao, ex-director Maruti Suzuki Center for Excellence, uh, head research and development chief general manager he is instrumental in giving us and Maruti some of the most important products from Maruti. Mr. Rao is seen as one of the innovators who devised frugal and economically viable product development for a challenging country like India. He's a graduate from IIT Kanpur. Mr. Rao is, has been our advisor of Safe in India since the very beginning. And you know he has great practical experience of working for several decades in on the on on the ground in factories so mr rao if i could welcome you to talk about your subject you have about 15 minutes thank you sandeep let me just show my could somebody put the video on and the slides on please ashish yeah i will do it myself okay You are able to see the slide? Yes, sir. Now? Yes. Yes, it's visible, okay. sir. <coughs> and they are moving. Uh, Mr. Okay. Mr. C.K. Bishwas, Mr. Indrajit Bhattacharya, Ms. Sudipta Badra, Mr. Sumit Roy, Mukul Bhatia, and Mr. Sandeep Sasdeva, and the participants. Greetings to all. I am very happy to be participating in this webinar uh, and would like to thank you say, and Safe, 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 Safe in India for organizing this webinar to highlight the importance of uh, uh, safe accident free workplace and giving me this opportunity to talk from my experience uh, how safe workplace helps improve productivity. Uh, 
we are all working to serve the customer. So let us first talk about customer. Is, is the slide changing? No, sir. Oh, again, same problem. <laughs> what is to be done? Uh, now it is okay. It's come. Okay, it's come. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> as Gandhi said, the customer is the most important person. And uh, he, the customer is not dependent on us, but we are dependent on him and he is the purpose of our work. No, we are not doing him a favor. Rather, he is doing us a favor by giving us an opportunity to serve him. <clears throat> Many of the uh, MSMEs uh, being B2B may not be serving the end customer, but same thing applies to whom we are supplying parts. To summarize, we are all here to uh, strive for our customer satisfaction, maybe customer delight. Slide has changed? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to take a few minutes to explain what are the needs of various uh, stakeholders in the whole business. Customer needs are very simple. He wants a trouble-free product of right quality at right price. <clears throat> Worker is the most important stakeholder who actually acts to make the product for the customer. He generally is unsatisfied, expects a good reasonable salary and a good safe workplace. The organization is serving the customer through the products made by the workers. For the business to continue, organization has to satisfy or rather delight the customer by meeting the quality, cost, and quantity expectations always. This will ensure continuous business to the organization. For this to ha happen, the worker has to make the products of high quality continuously for which in addition to the right manufacturing processes and equipment, he needs peace of mind, which can be ensured by an accident-free safe workplace. This will satisfy the organization as it would meet customer requirements through the products and continuous business. Organizations must not think that implementing safe workplace as additional expense but as an incredibly important component to business success. Additional checks for a safe environment should not be looked at as additional time and money. It is time and money well spent. Small money spent for preventive care is better than large amount in emergency. Safe workplace ensures the workers to focus on manufacturing without any diversion. Ivy, sir, your slides are not moving again. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, my God. No, are you looking at the slide for this? The worker has to make the products of right quality? Yeah, yeah. No. That's right. Yeah, looking... I'm still a... Yes, yes. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm still on the slide only. Yes. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> okay. Uh, manufacturing without any diversion. As a result, making good quality parts if other systems are in place. If there are no rejections and workers are able to focus on manufacturing, the, pro the productivity would be the best. In this situation, all three are happy and satisfied. Safety, quality, and productivity are inextricably linked and 
and these are considered three pillars. Uh, often it's looked at as interfering with each other, but they actually operate in concert. So <clears throat> safety and quality has to be uh, is the basic requirement for workers to work to the best to, to achieve the best productivity. Our prime minister had at different times given very ambitious uh, vision for India, initially with Make in India for the world, and recently the Atmanirbhar Bharat. Uh, through Skill India, Swachh Bharat, uh, Zero Defects and uh, Zero Effect. All these are very important requirements for auto <coughs> industry and the targets are very clear. Make in India for the world, workers training for skill, uh, requires workers training for skill development, 5S for safe, clean workplace, with zero defects, require, which requires best quality and zero effects for environmental protection. No accidents and loss of any life with high focus on eliminating imports and creating technology in India. Government is coming out with a lot of schemes to support these areas. Everyone should make these initiatives successful and become uh, and and uh, take advantage of these schemes to set up an ideal uh, workplace. I am now engaged with Terry in their uh, Center for <coughs> Sustainable Mobility as Visiting Senior Fellow, where we are studying various technology options for sustainable mobility to protect the environment for future generations. Prior to this, I was with Maruti for a very long time, heading the engineering function. Maruti has taught me the importance of systems and 100% adherence to systems. Maruti has really worked hard with all component manufacturers to bring their quality to desired levels and make them meet Maruti's quality, quantity, and delivery requirements at desired prices to offer Indian customers most fuel efficient global quality small cars. Maruti continues to work with the suppliers for upgradation to make them stronger. <clears throat> Maruti had set up Maruti Center for Excellence as a non-profit organization along with component manufacturers for working on uh, upgradation of all component manufacturers to improve <laughs> all aspects of manufacturing, including training of technicians and executives. Started in a small way in Burgaon, it now has full-pledged training center for killing technicians for all uh, new technologies and cluster programs for improving operational performance of component manufacturers. As Ms. Sandeep mentioned, I was director for Marti Center for Excellence for five years. That was a time when there were a lot of market failures due to inner parts supplied by MSMEs. During my tenure in MACE, we had focused on tire tools, that is MSMEs, for implementing the basics of lean manufacturing systems with zero defects and zero uh, PPM rejections as main focus. We used to have regular review meetings at different tire to vendors and plant visits and analyze what is right and what is wrong. This is the time when I realized every MCM, uh, MSME is unique in their own way and generalization was difficult. Most of the MSMEs were very receptive to make changes for better quality and productivity, which would improve the bottom line. They were not willing to pump, uh, spend money for big changes. Most of the small component manufacturers are MSMEs, family owned and run by the family. This interested me to study the status of MSMEs in auto component manufacturing 
and I have undertaken research study for my PhD uh, from Terry School of Advanced Studies. The primary survey conducted about the status of operational practices and their impact on performance of the organization. And I tried to establish some correlation between the quality of products being produced with operational practices. <clears throat> Could not see any strong correlation. On further analysis, after visiting some of the manufacturers, I realized some factors unique to each enterprise contributing to the efficiency of performance. The proprietor's attitude about various factors had very strong influence, nullifying other parameters. There is a strong need for all these small manufacturers also to adopt professional management techniques and make systems and adhere to them. With the professional approach combined with the proprietor's personal involvement, it will make the organization a good, safe place for, to work. When working with vendors for upgradation in clusters, normally uh, the turnover and number of defects, rejections in PPM and number of accidents are monitored as indicators of the health of the organization. The data of defects, rejections and the number of accidents collected from component manufacturers from cluster upgradation activities indicates the following. The raw data without grouping based on manufacturing process does not show any trend. However, when segregated based on the product types, based on the manufacturing processes, the enterprises with high number of accidents also show high rejections. But enterprises with low accidents do not necessarily have low rejections, which indicates other factors influence, influencing the quality of products. We need to have basic process and equipment for making the parts right in the first place. The peace of mind triggered by safe work environment makes work, workforce give their best with good quality products. Sorry. I'd like to explain uh, the impact of some of the unfortunate fire accidents in two of the big component manufacturers. The fire occurred during the third shift and before any action could be taken to put down the fire, the total plant was in ashes. This not only affected the specific vendor, but brought the OEM's production to halt as they could not make incomplete vehicles for want of supplies from the a vendor where the fire accident took place. With a lot of support from other vendors, the damages could be corrected in six months. This type of accident due to insufficient pull proofing of systems and regular and uh, Regular maintenance affects everyone in the organization and also many OEMs depending on them for supplies. If the production at OEMs get impacted, it affects all component suppliers. Though they would be in a position to supply parts, there will not be any demand from the OEMs for want of some parts from the affected uh, supplier. It is a business loss for all manufacturers in the supply chain, affecting so many families linked with these organizations. There was one case of structural failure of a mezzanine, which could have become very crucial, critical, and uh, and the reason uh, attributed was due to overloading of the mezzanine, and the design required design criteria used was not for that particular loading. <coughs> We come across a lot of accidents in manufacturing operations due to improper automation, incomplete controls, or bypassing the controls for more yield where the specific operator suffers uh, 
and we know of cases where the the, the, uh, the workers uh, lose their fingers, uh, the hands are crushed, and permanent unseen effect on health due to hazardous environment, especially in chemical factories. All these accidents cost money to the organization for either compensation or loss of production immediately after the accident. Once the workers' morale goes down, it takes time to normalize. All this results in low productivity. Uh, the tire to suppliers who are mainly SM, MSMEs are very crucial link in the supply chain of auto industry. For achieving the anticipated growth of auto industry, which has been predicted to uh, grow by three times by end of this decade, uh, the S MSMEs have to streamline their manufacturing processes and create safe work environment for workers to deliver uh, consistent quality products of global level. Indian government is aggressively pushing adaptation of electric mobility to reduce ever increasing crude oil import and also eliminate the pollution due to auto exhaust. With electrification of automobiles, the component manufacturers are faced with challenges and opens opportunity to make India hub for component supply to global markets. I am sure the I am sure MSMEs will gear up to face the challenges and grab the opportunity for creating new safe accident-free workplaces for making India center for these new technology parts for international markets. With uh, the adoption of uh, electric mobility, there are a lot of changes required in the vehicles, so also the component requirements. And this is an opportunity for component manufacturers to look at manufacturing in a different uh, from different angle. And this is an opportunity for MSMEs to supply to the uh, uh, OEMs in different countries. So we, uh, with the MSMEs have to adopt and try to benchmark global companies to uh, for meeting all the requirements. Lot of these global global MSME sorry global OEMs have a condition for safety also where they audit the component manufacturer to make sure that they meet all the requirements of safety standards which are uh, mandatory in those countries. So for it is not only for the worker safety also from the business point of view it is very very essential and important for a component manufacturer to make the workplace safe and uh, make workers tension free to give their best, which would help eliminating the defects, improving the quality and hence the productivity of the organization. Thanks for patient hearing. Thank you, Ivy, sir. I guess uh, we will hold the questions till later. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, I took out a couple of messages from your very practical experience, which I think carry credibility given that you have done it on the ground and it's not just theory, which is that you are saying that attitude of owners is critical. And you said that the owners need to take ownership of professional management and of involving themselves personally. I mean, I guess what you're saying is not leave it to the factory management and people on the floor all the time, but actually take leadership in that. The second thing you said, which I picked up was higher accidents lead to higher rejection rates. And I think that's something important that comes from your experience. And we know yes. that Marathi at several of our report launch forums, forums has often said that they see a management which is interested in workplace safety as more professional manage, manage, management that they want to deal with. The third thing I picked up is, in, you know, you, you talked about risk from improper automation, improper design like mezzanine, bypassing of, a, of, of uh, safety procedures and processes and technology. And I think that's an important point that we need to get deeper into in future, future uh, seminars of this nature. 
and lastly we said for future growth and electrification of vehicles which basically means there will be less components required from the auto sector supply chain and msmes in general right i you are asking for safer accident free workspaces because that is an important part of uh, of, of future growth and selection of suppliers in the future so thank you so much ib sir if you can take your slides so, off and uh, uh, sanjay bhai just one second this point also comes from the focus of the government where they want to make india has hub for manufacturing of uh, uh, electric uh, component requirements for electric vehicles and they want indian suppliers to be i mean to supply to global markets for oems in overseas so for Absolutely. that to happen the all manufacturers have to comply with all the safety norms which are stipulated in those countries though they are not unfortunately mandated in, in india absolutely so that right. is the point i am trying to if they want to be a global player it has it is a requirement it is not no longer a option <laughs> yes i think the point well made uh, and it will go deeper in the supply chain uh, as a requirement so it's it's an important thing for msmes to be part of that global supply chain thank you so much iv sir if you can stop sharing your slides please yeah, i'll yeah, now yeah. welcome yeah. ms sudipta bhadra who's a chief technical officer at ilo she is currently uh, the chief technical officer at ilo she has been with ilo since 2010 she holds a masters degree in disaster mitigation and a post graduate in human rights law from nlu and has worked for partners in change she was previously national project manager score so sudipta please if i can uh, request you to come on screen and talk to us for 5 to 10 minutes about uh, the score program and anything else you wish to highlight we can't hear you yet okay my apologies uh, i just wanted to start by saying um a very good morning uh, to mr ck viswas sandeep ji you uh, dignitaries on the virtual dais and the participants from the msmes um i just wanted to check whether my uh, ppt slide is vi visible I it is yes okay fine and do you see it in the slide show mode or you see it like multiple slides right now one single slide. large slide show you can see the you can see one the single slide, slide. one the single slide, slide. sustain yeah, okay yeah. right right okay so i think uh, the previous speakers have already made the uh, discussion a little easy i mean i don't have to cover too many things uh but uh, just wanted to start on the, uh, start, uh, or connect from the point where sandeep ji left uh, the commitment of owners is extremely important um but also equally important is the capacity and the orientation of the supervisors and the plant heads the owners cannot be there everywhere but their commitment is definitely important but as we know that the supervisors plant heads the managers on the shop floor they play a very critical role because they are actually the one who are generally in touch with the workers uh we spoke a lot about uh, lean and the program that i'm going to talk about um, the score program builds on the lean concepts uh resource efficiency lean is not a new concept for india indians it's it's actually inbuilt in our culture it's a different thing that we are now getting again reintroduced to these concepts from other countries and probably it's a kind of rediscovering ourselves um and the other thing before i get into what score is the lean management concepts all these five ways and all these are very universal this is like mba books you know uh, where you see the curriculum everywhere the same but what matters basically is the method of coaching and mentoring at the shop floor and this is extremely important when we are talking about msmes we generally try to put the msmes all in one ba basket but we know the issues of msmes the micro enterprises are very different from what we see in the small enterprises or the medium enterprises and here what actually matters is the absorptive capacity we may talk about very uh, all this concepts but if their absorption capacity is less then one has to go with a very calibrated approach to see that they are gradually learning what we are talking about so uh, let me just uh, get into the program that we have the score is a uh, program um, 
it's the full form is sustaining competitive and responsible enterprises and um, basically it is um, building on the challenges that the msmes face uh, the external uh, challenges we know in what uh, environment they are operating but what is very important is that while uh, the external challenges are something which which takes time to address um, most often uh, when we speak to the msmes they um, they they tend to uh, neglect or ignore the fact that it's not only the finance or access to market that makes them competitive it is their own internal management practices that that is so so important um, and uh, while we talk about resource efficiency it is also about how uh, they they manage the uh, the whole work environment so what is core is basically it is a uh, sorry i need to just uh, put it like this yeah so what is score is basically that you know uh, it is um, it uh, what is unique about score is it builds on uh, it speaks about the lean management concepts the kaizen tools but it builds on the cooperative foundation so it it actually involves the worker from the very beginning in the designing of the improvement process and it tries to have the ownership from the workers because otherwise if it is only the owners who have to drive this then it will never be sustainable and the enterprise will keep on investing on the same issues same practices year after year what is important is the workers own up and understand that this is important um and then it actually speaks about the international standards because it's coming from the ilo you are aware of the labor conventions on the osh and you also might be aware of the osh code that now has been introduced in india the the government has come with the osh code uh, not all enterprises are covered uh, but that doesn't mean that one has to wait for the legal compliances to come or the legislations to come for us to uh, you know change our practices we shouldn't wait uh, for uh, you know the countries to come and tell us that you know you need to change your behavior and then only we will take the supplies from you it's up to us you know we have to understand that we have to be competitive sorry uh it also speaks about systems development and resource efficiency but based on performance data one thing that we know a lot about the msmes is they because they are not too many people in that enterprises uh, the most of the people are not very trained skilled uh the data collection is extremely poor and if you don't have data how do you measure your performance how do you know that because of you are having this quality issue because of what actually or or if you are not able to deliver on time then what were the issues for that so this is something that the score focuses a lot and the unique thing about the score is as i said that we we talk, uh, promote a lot of worker uh, manager dialogue and we have from the very beginning something called the team enterprise improvement team they are the one who drive they plan the improvements and decide at their own rhythm what in practices they have to introduce so score speaks about uh, the rational behind score is productivity and working conditions are linked and working condition is not only about occupational health safety or working condition includes lot of other aspects also it is minimum wage discrimination so many other <laughs> aspects are there score is present in almost like uh, now almost 15 countries uh and if you um, i mean maybe this uh, the text are too small but it's it's actually uh, applicable in many many sectors different sectors and uh, in india we have done it in the automobile sector for the uh, for the for mahindra and mahindra thermax tafe simpson um and also a lot of other uh, uh, brands uh, garment brands and also it's there in china indonesia i'm i'm just now focusing only on the auto sector so it's in china indonesia uh, india and then in south africa we have done score in the automobile sector uh, score uh, score is a modular program um, and it is uh, because bec why we have uh, developed a modular program is because we know the msm is you know they they um, they cannot afford to spend time always in the improvements you know they they are always on the fire fighting mode and it's not easy for them to take out time it is not easy for them to take out money to invest because they are working on very thin margins so uh, we we have this modules which are for 3 months and um, if, and 3 months we introduce a concept we try to see the enterprises are able to sustain it it's not a top down approach it is as you can see it's a participatory approach it is done by the uh, consultant or the industry experts who have been trained by the ilo for a very standardized training approach 
we don't see variations across the enterprises in term of course enterprises are all unique but the minimum quality is guaranteed because the trainers are all trained so some minimum base level and uh, results one can expect um, and the focus is a lot on capacity building of the employees uh, we also have uh, so module one is a mandatory module because that's where we are trying to build the relationships. Uh, this is the module where we introduce data management systems, uh, five ways that you speak uh, that previous speakers spoke a lot about 10 minute line meetings um, and something about uh, uh, employee suggestion scheme, because if you are expecting the workers to really own up the improvements, then they have to see some gain sharing in the whole process. Otherwise, why should they do it? So it's a very common sense thing that we talk about. Then the other modules are optional. Uh, once we have laid the foundation, then you have the other modules. Module two is on quality. Module three is on productivity, cleaner production. Uh, module four is on workforce management, uh, which is a very important area, but most often ignored by and neglected by the MSMEs because MSMEs cannot afford to have sophisticated HR systems. So this is not an HR, but this is more about managing the workforce and the module five is on occupational health safety. Uh, I won't go deeper into the training methodology, uh, more or less. I think this this is what generally any lean programs will follow uh, because I know I have um, our one of the score enterprises champion also who will be taking us through uh, the program. The ultimate bottom line for us is why should an MSME work on all these things? They should work only be if they can see some impact in their indicators, their performance. And these are some of the indicators. I won't go into the deeper into the indicators, but you can see that we have an indicator on accidents logged. Now, when I'm talking about accidents logged and what I haven't put here is we, we sometimes are very uh, fixed with this term accidents. You know how many accidents are happening? What we miss to talk about is how many near misses are happening because MSMEs may not be actually, you know, accidents are like the final, you know, it has happened. But near misses are like where you we, you know, we somehow avoid it or maybe by chance it got avoided. So you're and we sometimes don't look into that if there were near misses or minor injuries, which we are not capturing because of that, how many times it resulted in stop of the production or the quality got affected. The other thing when we speak about OSH is we sometimes think that only the machines are the main thing. What about the skills, the hand movement of the person? Um, or, or the lighting, you know, um, the, whether the lighting is falling right on the uh, in uh, the workplace, uh, the sh uh, station workstation. Then what about the uh, um, uh, ventilation? The heat, all these things are also part of the occupational health safety as we speak. And this all results in the productivity. So, so when we say that, you know, uh, OSH, OSH is not the main thing. What is important is that OSH may be happening because of the wrong uh, skills or the wrong training, wrong hand movement, um, or and also our, because of the five is maybe the, the shop floor is very cluttered. You know, you haven't put the things in the right places. Uh, maybe the inflammable materials have been put in a very wrong place uh, where you don't even have any fire extinguisher or the electrical connections are there, uh, wirings are there. The electrical wirings are probably not checked properly and that may be resulting in fires also. So there are many factors and uh, since we are not doing a training here, I won't go deeper into what are the reasons and how we manage. Uh, I will just go a little deeper into the module five, what we do in OSH. Uh, as I say that, um, as I mentioned in the previous slides, we work on improvement, uh, major improvements areas in the health safety. Uh, we do a kind of risk assessment mapping and then uh, um, look into more the ergonomics. So it's not only about going and telling a person that, you know, this is what is the health safety issues and please take care of this. It's basically uh, we encourage the employees, as I said, the EIT and the, uh, the others also in the shop floor to think their own solutions because the problem also has been created by them. It is their actions that is creating the problem. So they only will know what can be the solutions. With little awareness, they would be probably able to find the solutions because the best solutions are the ones which can be found by themselves, not by external consultants. 
and of course the JSC, uh, I mean, the, basically the EIT also works as the health safety committees. Uh, again, um, so these are the uh, testimonials. I won't go. Uh, there is a short, small uh, video that I have. And uh, before I show the video, uh, I wanted to stress upon that our focus in SCORE is on low cost solutions, which is easily achievable by the enterprise and they can sustain it. Uh, that's most important and it's based on the absorptive capacity of the MSMEs. We do a focus, uh, we do a lot of focus also on the health part in terms of toilets and drinking water. These are the most low cost solutions we can think. And sometimes we have never done any studies to see that if the toilets are not clean or the drink waters are not ever, you know, it's not in the uh, in a proper condition, you know, how many people might be falling sick? Absenteeism is also li linked to OSH. And in uh, following the COVID, uh, now COVID-19 also is important. Uh, we spoke about standards and I just wanted to tell about the EU due diligence uh, that has been introduced. You may be knowing about it and this definitely is going to have implications on all the suppliers who are aspiring to export to European uh, Union. So, uh, so let me show the video. I don't I just wanted to check uh, Sandeep ji how much time I have. Should I show the video or how long is the video? Sandeep? Uh, it's two minutes. You can show it and just answer a question before you go. Somebody said that is your score program only for auto sector or other sectors too? I think you said garments, but could you talk a little bit about it? We, we it's it's applicable in all the sectors. We do a kind of customization and tweaking. Uh, so, uh, for example, in India, we are doing in the garments, uh, automobile, uh, food processing, textiles, mm. Mm. and uh, actually, Ministry of MSME also has. Uh, is the video, can you see the video? Not yet, it's just a slide. If it's a okay. technical problem, we will move on uh, because of shortage of time. Okay, yeah, so maybe. We, we have to stop the slide and then show the video. Okay, okay, right, okay. Yeah, both can't work together. Okay. okay. Hmm. I think better to see the video. Uh, okay, so I have to figure out from where to show the video. Okay, it's there. No, maybe can, you can. Uh, maybe can you, you see? Can, give can, the, can you see the video now? Yes. Okay, fine. Maybe you can give the web link also to the participants yes, on the chat the, box. Okay, right. On, on the chat it's box, the, you can. If you don't mind, can you put the link on the chat box? Yes, please. Can you see the video now? Yes. It's done. Yes, see it, uh, but there's no sound, so I I think it will come. Uh, I. I think then then probably I would suggest that yeah. I will share the link and people maybe the participants can see. Yes, I think that will be better. OK, thank you. Right. Thank and, you so uh, much, uh, Sudipta. For, and, and, you know, I, I before I introduce the next speaker, Mr. Mukul Bhatia, I just wanted to uh, summarize a couple of messages that I have picked up. Um, I think you talked about commitment of owners, but really important to have ownership of workers and superintendents on the ground in the factory without which one cannot come with the right ideas and their solutions. Uh, you talked about low cost solutions that SCORE program promotes, and I think that's an important one for MSMEs, and I think worth noting. Um, you talked about it's not just about machines. There are lots of other things that make it safer and better for workers, things like hand movements, ergonomics, skills, lighting, ventilation, heat, you know, these kind of things yeah. are not expensive, as you were saying, yeah. but they can add to a better working environment, a safer working environment. And you right? So, um, uh, yes, yeah. so if you can please put your uh, video link in the chat, yeah, yeah. I'm sure the participants, I'm more coming. than 200 here, would like to see that. Yeah. Can you send the gate? Ivy, sir, can you go on mute? Bit. Ivy, sir, can you go on mute, please? I will now, uh, Sudipta, thank you so much. And we will request you to come back to this forum in this series to talk a little bit more in detail about some of these things as we get feedback from the participants here on what, what else they want to hear from you. Uh, so I'll introduce the next speaker. Mr. Mukul Bhatia is the director of Champion Components Private Limited. He has over 15 years of experience in the industry. Upon completing his graduation as a computer engineer, his interest took him towards mechanical engineering. And after gaining field experience, he completed his master's in engineering management and MBA 
from the University of Technology at Sydney. He then joined his family business and within five years led his team to winning the prestigious MSME National Award, first prize. He is himself a Six Sigma Green Belt and has got rich work experience from different cultures. I have spoken to uh, Mukul now and I have to say he is one of those young leaders who looks at this issue in a fresh light, in a professional light. He's the kind of owner that I think uh, that you know we would like to see more and more of to not just improve working conditions for workers, that's critical, but concurrently improve the business environment and how uh, you know production is done in the country. So Mukul, if I can hand over to you for 10, 15 minutes, please. Uh, good evening, Sandeep ji. Um, am I audible to you? Yes. And what about the slides? Yes, we can see all the slides right now. Okay, and you can see the movement in slides? Yes, just saw one. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, a very good morning to everyone. A uh, quick introduction from my side. So basically, we are uh, into sheet metal manufacturing. Um, so basically, we are part of the automotive industry uh, with two manufacturing units uh, in Faridabad, Haryana. Sudita ji talked a lot about score. I'm going to take it uh, forward with the real case example in our company. We did score uh, way back in 2011. It was a two-year program. It was a pilot program, so it took a uh, lot longer than planned. Uh, interestingly, we were the first company in all of India to complete the score program, all five modules. And also, we were the first company in all of India to complete both lean and score program the lean program that Mr. Rao was talking about and the score program. Uh, so what you can say is that we will al always remain the most experienced company in both score and lean in India. Now, what were the benefits of the score program? Sujitta ji talked about teamwork. That's what it's all about, teamwork. And that's the entire core of the score program, uh, teamwork and communication. And then comes knowledge, knowledge sharing, and then they try to build a continuous improvement culture in the company, which fortunately we have benefited a lot. Taking you to the direct benefits, now I have not changed the numbers. These are numbers from uh, six or seven years ago. Uh, I've not changed them because you know there's no point the monetary benefit of space saving will keep on increasing as the rental keeps on increasing. But the, the idea to show these slides is that there is actual direct monetary benefit from these programs. We talk about the on-time delivery score, which was still, uh, we still try to maintain it uh, above 99.5% as of today. Uh, Kaizen projects completed. So every time we do something good, we talk about it and uh, we turn it into a complete Kaizen project. Right, so there have been a lot of focus on electricity uh, over the past few uh, years, I believe. Uh, electricity costs have gone up by a lot. Uh, you see the power factor that we increased from 0.78 in 2015 to 0.95 in 2017. Currently, we are maintaining it at over 0.99%. Uh, if I have time, uh, we'll come back to the power factor uh, again shortly. So the first thing, uh, when Sudipta ji was showing her slides, if you notice, there were five modules in the SCORE program. Safety was module number five. Now, that does not mean that safety is of least importance to them. They, they realized that safety, implementing safety is uh, a process that uh, incurs costs. And that's why they keep it for the last. They want to show the benefits to the industry first before they get on to the safety module. And they start with 5S, and when we did 5S, uh, there was a direct benefit within the first month of rupees 1.5 lakh rupees. And this was way back in 2011. Right, so what did the people say about the SCORE program? How did they benefit after uh, the completion of the modules? And you can see here, for anyone who doesn't uh, understand uh, Hindi here, so basically what this guy, is a welder, he's a welder in our company, and he said, well, uh, just by changing the ergonomics, the sitting position, uh, he now uh, takes less number of leads. You know, something that uh, these, these are the things that people usually don't talk about. 
you know because they see it as part of the occupation itself and not as an occupational hazard this person you know his his job is to do a lot of hammering and uh, he used to have a lot of headache but with the right kind of hammer with the right kind of ppe now he can work safely he can work for longer hours uh, and that's the benefit now just to take you to do a little bit of a pictorial journey just before and after pictures of how we benefited from the program and ever since so you can see the, on the left hand side uh, the gas supply uh, was in the company the cylinders were kept loose in the company uh, which was clearly unsafe and now we have taken it out outside and we have uh, created an entire gas bank for different machines in a, a particular area in the open you can see how we went from the old uh, methods of electrical safety uh, to the latest equipment that is available something that uh, um the micro sector uh, needs to work on sincerely you can see the efficiency here the old uh, storage facility we had as compared to the new one then this is the inspection room and you, we sudeep so ji talked about lighting as well uh, inspection needs a particular uh, lux level and we were not even aware of that at that time and we created an entire facility because of all the 5s efforts this is the same picture you see of the same area and we created an entire facility uh, for store for standard room and for incoming inspection area so you can see really the comparison of before and after pick this is the uh, press shop that we had now even in the before picture you can see that uh, we never uh, really compromised on safety we were only lacking because of the lack of knowledge uh, you know but now things have changed drastically this is how welding was being done uh, before now we have welding booths with fume extraction systems so the welders can work longer hours which is good for them as well for their uh, pocket and they can work safely right this is this is the other way around how it looks from the inside uh now this is these are the pictures taken exactly from the same angle so you can see the comparison you can see the difference we even squeezed in a, a training center in the shop floor in the corner and this was the end result the end result was a shop floor that was much more efficient much more safer to work with you talk about lean you talk about any of the eight waste in the lean and this is the kind of thing you need to reduce them you need to reduce transportation you need to uh, implement single piece flow uh, you need to work on it and this was the result so what was the learning curve the learning curve was that safety maintenance and productivity are linked and they are indeed clearly linked safety does lead to increased productivity i don't have time but i do have data uh, from our company over the years to show that maintenance leads to increased productivity and they both lead to increased efficiency they both lead to uh, increased efficiency and why why we put in maintenance here this is this is all about safety and productivity why we put in maintenance here why maintenance is necessary uh, look we have we have learned over the past couple of years uh, during this covid times and anyone uh, from the industry here would would agree with me that covid has le led to a lot of fluctuations in orders you know there are times then uh, when the company is completely closed whether it's a lockdown whether it's uh, whether uh, when there is no oxygen for the industry Uh, for the manufacturing sector the time when the covid is rampant and you don't have people to work for and then things open and there are pent up demands and that's that's when you actually have to cover up for all the lost days and imagine if, if during those days your machines break down and they don't work that's almost that's almost suicidal for the industry and what about the rising labor cost the labor costs go up every year the fuel cost uh, keeps going up every year and i was talking about power factor before so now let me uh, give a small example now uh, traditional wisdom in our industry is that if a motor goes uh, down if, if there is a, a breakage in motor it is sent for rewinding 
Now we have to realize that every time a motor is rewinded, its efficiency goes down by about 20%. Which means it takes in more electricity. If you are, are on DG, it will consume more fuel, and uh, that adds to your cost. All because there is no maintenance, so it it reduces efficiency, and the place is unsafe. I'd I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about the IA standards here. Now, the MSME stands for micro, small, and medium sector enterprises. I'd like to talk about the micro and small sectors, and the ISO standards. Now, ISO standards, the way I feel is is not for everyone. It's not for the micro sector. Why do I say that? It's a big statement because it does cost money. You know, there is a lack of knowledge in the micro sector, and training costs money. implementation of the is standard cost money you need a person to maintain all the documentation then there's a cost of auditing from an external agency and then there's a cost of maintaining the standard because the audit is going to happen every 12 months so you have to maintain the standard as well and that's the, the these costs are the main barrier that are uh, hurting the micro sector and they cannot enter these is standards and they cannot afford these is standards so what is the way forward what is the solution my suggestion is that we need a toned down version of these standards some things that cover very basics of safety very basic so if an if it's an is standard on safety we need a questionnaire uh, from the government that can be that can be downloaded from the internet by all the uh, industry uh, members and it needs to cover things that are very basic things like shoes for everyone even if they are not not safe safety shoes let's let's start with shoes for everyone you know gloves if if necessary fire extinguishers need to be there proper ventilation needs to be there and sudipta ji was talking about some survey sudipta ji do we have any survey of how many workshop level uh, enterprises are providing soaps or washing hands over the past couple of years if you have learned anything is that washing your hands properly uh, you know uh, can lead to occupational safety as well otherwise it's it's, it's a occupational hazard so a question air that is really very basic that can be downloaded from the government website that can be uploaded with proofs and it should be a self certification mechanism so once you upload all the pictures as proofs then you can download a cert a certificate uh, certificate from the website certifying that yes you cover the basics of the safety standards or the government can approve certifying agencies that that could work as well to do very uh, you know basic audits uh, for a few hours only uh, that cover these things now there is a problem of mindset there uh, a change of attitude is required and a change of attitude must always come right from the top and when i say from the top i am talking about the government here and let me uh, give you a small example so if a certifying agency comes to me to uh, to do some sort of an audit in my company and i am 98% compliant and there's a gap of 2% what that agency will say is right so your company uh, is non compliant in 2% of the areas this is the non conformity please fix it that will be the attitude a government person comes to our company we are 98% compliant there's a gap of 2% they will slap a fine for 2% while ignoring the 98% that we are doing so that needs to change and that can change with the help of external certifying agencies that the government can approve right in the end i will just say that safety is a necessity it is not an option right uh, and that's all we need to remember in the end uh sandeep ji over to you thank you so much mukul that's really inspiring to see i have one question before uh... we i introduce the next speaker uh, yes so you know, the the pictures you have uh, if you can take your slides off the pictures you have shown before and after are quite inspiring um, and you know the although you have made the point that it pays off can you just uh, talk a little bit about 
the expenditures you needed to make you don't have to mention confidential information and how it paid back how long how much time it took because clearly you have changed a factory which we see all the time in gurgaon faridabad other parts of the country yes. Yes. something that you yourself call export line you know yes. so 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 talk a little bit so people here understand that it was worth it so this was done uh, for a particular customer uh, this particular transformation took about a year to implement and uh, we spent a total of uh, around 40 lakh rupees in this area mm. and our business has gone up uh, in the tune of 80 to 90 lakh rupees per month from that customer since then it's been 5 years now brilliant i think and, and another thing if i could show if you are interested in this another thing if i could show can you see this slide yeah no right yes so, yes. so when we when we talk about lean manufacturing when we talk about uh, you know efficiency so what we did was this was the layout of the shop floor before transformation and we designed it and it the design went through a lot of iterations because we wanted to keep it practical and we wanted to keep it simple so we kept on simplifying the design we kept on simplifying the layout and this was the end result a shop floor that is very safe and very efficient of course the journey continues we keep on working on it and but this was the result the designing part planning part itself took us about 3 months excellent mukul thank you so much and we'll request you to come back to this forum again because i'm sure there are going to be really good questions for you in future too and i really like before and after as of course is standard practice nowadays to show but you know i noticed that almost on all top slides you see the idea of safety and efficiency safety and efficiency it kept occurring and it's an important thing uh, the connection that you draw yourself from real life experience and having done it um you also talked about lack of knowledge was the stumbling block not the intention the intention was there from the beginning is the knowledge and again this is our effort that through this semin uh, you know series of seminars and webinars we are able to share this knowledge across and that people come together to make these changes in micro and mid size smes uh, msmes um there are lots of requests already in the chat box of future sessions based on some of the things you're talking about automation lean kaizen etc so those are good ideas please keep them coming in the chat uh, section any questions any ideas because that's the only way we can build the content of this webinar in future for your needs otherwise we'll end up talking of something that you know you may not really appreciate so please give us those ideas and keep them coming i will in interest of time i'll now introduce our last speaker mr sumit roy last but not the least because it's interesting that uh, uh, sudeepta and, and mukul talked about maintenance of the machines too right and and, and the benefits of those Pre previously mr ivy rao also spoke about it so mr sumit roy is the director of safety at regional labor institute of dg fastly in government of india he holds a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering post diploma in industrial safety and masters degree in ecology and environment he started his professional career with the manufacturing sector in the year 2003 in an automobile manufacturing unit uh, under the ministry of defense and worked on various aspects for more than 8 years he joined as deputy director safety in 2012 in mumbai and was promoted as director safety in the year 2018 and joined regional labor institute faridabad and is presently continuing there now we we have been working with dg fastly we have been arranging of late training courses in hindi for workers with mr roy and dr elangovan who is the dg fastly for government of india so i'll request you mr roy to uh, please talk for about 15 20 minutes on the maintenance of machines and how it helps business and safety so over to you we can't hear you to the other folks while mr roy is joining apologies we are running a little bit late i think the content was proving to be very uh, engaging and interesting i hope uh, you know you were able to listen to most of it uh, give us another 20 minutes or so and we will try closing it after that mr roy we can't hear you Yeah, uh, somebody has to unmute his camera and uh, uh, mic. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We have given him access. He yeah. can unmute himself. Yeah, now it is there. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Sandeep ji, for introducing me, and good afternoon to all. Uh, so, basically, I will be deliberating on the machines, uh, the machine safety part, and uh, how uh, they help, and how they actually uh, also uh, they uh, incur loss on us, and how we should uh, be working with them. So, I will be just sharing my presentation. Is my screen visible, sir? Uh, yes, it is now. Yeah. So, can you uh, try switching slides? Let's see it's working. Just try switching some slides. Is it working? Not... Yes, yes, it's working. Yes, please I... go ahead. Yes, yeah, please you. go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, cost of the accidents, my uh, talk will be basically focused on uh, how to maintain the machines. See, machines basically, uh, all of us, as we uh, well acknowledge that we can't work without them machines basically uh, as humans we have uh, uh, we have uh, invented the machines to make our work easier but again we have to realize that while working with these machines there are certain limitations for these machines and we need to know them we need to maintain them properly so that we can uh, get our intended uh, results without uh, 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 sacrificing our life or health or property so uh, just to analyze the situation uh, i could find an uh, article uh, in an international journal where they where they have carried out a study of the accidents in the manufacturing industry uh, wherein uh, involving the machines and uh, uh, as i could find out from there that uh, they have studied around 773 accidental cases and from which uh, around uh, 272 they resulted because of the machine failure. And all these machine failure accidents, they were mostly attributed to the bad maintenance of the machines or poor planning, poor lack of super proper supervision or missing or insufficient machine maintenance program. So uh, that is the thing that uh, the accidents, when they uh, take place, uh, uh, they cause uh, the damage or the uh, Maybe it, it may be to the health of the person or it may be a property damage also. And not only uh, this uh, um, uh, maintenance part, uh, uh, when we say uh, machine maintained in uh, good condition, not only the maintenance, it also includes that for each and every part should be there, should be well maintained and functioning properly, includes the machine guards also. So first of all, just let us uh, be apprised of the situation that what in general we think of. Basically, we can find uh, like there are three categories of the maintenance. The first part uh, we talk of is the preventive maintenance or the, uh, then the, we have the predictive maintenance and the breakdown maintenance. Now, most of us, uh, um, we may feel that uh, the preventive maintenance is costlier. Why? Because preventive maintenance is basically planned. It is scheduled and it has to be carried out. It is not dependent on the uh, what your machine pulses are saying. It is not dependent on what uh, whether the conditions uh, are there to be uh, uh, to overall or to maintain or to or to service the machine. So at times uh, it seems to the employers or the occupiers that the preventive maintenance is a burden or it, it's costlier than any other type of maintenance. But in actual scenario, if if uh, if we see this breakdown maintenance, it is the costliest among all these three. The reason being. Breakdown is never scheduled. It is never planned. You have never planned for a breakdown. You only assume that your uh, machine will be working fine. But maybe at a high time, at a high point of time, when your uh, production is at the peak, the machine uh, goes under breakdown. It takes time. The machine downtime is there. It takes time to put back the machine to work. It may lead to your production loss. Or if that machine is a part of a product layout, it may stop the entire production line. Or Ultimately, you may lose your production targets. Apart from that, most importantly, you never know a breakdown. Basically, it may involve an accident also. And having said that, that accident part, we have to be cautious of this breakdown, I mean, uh, breakdown of the machines. Now, when we say accident, we have to apprise them. Let me share with you some uh, studies that I could find 
that how these accidents, machine accidents, uh, uh, the, um, they inflicted on the financial aspects of the employer or the occupier. So I could find some studies that has been carried out by some uh, insurance agencies. And the conclusion, they say that the safeguarding of the machines, that basically it provides an opportunity for the business to reduce their operating cost by eliminating the cost of an accident. Other parts are also there, like uh, boosting your employee morale. But the question next comes, how, how much can be saved? So another report, annual report uh, published by an US uh, insurance company, they say that the annual workplace uh, safety index that, uh, that US employees spent was nearly to the tune of $48.6 billion. That was spent for wage and productivity losses, medical expenses and administrative expenses that was incurred for the workers who were hurt on the job. Now, this is just to apprise of the situation that what an accident can lead to, it can take away all your profits. What you have basically saved by not maintaining them, it, a single incident can take away all the profits. Similar study by a Colorado State University, they also mentioned that the total direct and indirect cost of the workplace injury was at around uh, $128 billion. So the thing is that, when such uh, uh, unplanned incidents take place, wherein we don't know how much it will cost us. Some simple case studies I would uh, like to just discuss. It is, these are the practical scenarios, uh, which uh, in uh, many of the cases uh, it exists. And these are the um, you know, things, it, the same uh, things might be happening in other uh, small industries or micro industries also. As uh, we know that, yes, the uh, MSMEs, they have a limitation of uh, this, uh, maybe the financial part, uh, how much uh, they should invest, and uh, they may be thinking of the returns. So some case studies, I think uh, uh, it will be relevant over here to discuss uh, and to uh, see that uh, how uh, safety will pay back to you. So in one of the accident, basically, this first case study, uh, the worker, he was given a work by his employer to fit up some uh, fuel tank in a workshop and uh, which required the use of a terminal lug. Now, what happened in that industry, basically, uh, he couldn't find the lug of a correct size. And uh, uh, so he, what he chose among the available sizes, he chose, uh, he chose a size, he chose a size which was nearest to the uh, requirement, to his requirement. And uh, he started filing to, so as to enlarge the uh, hole of that uh, lug. And uh, while filing for some time when he could not make any uh, sub uh, substantial progress, what he decided, he uh, just found a drill machine, a bench drill nearby, and he just chose to uh, 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 put that lug in the drill machine and enlarge the hole. Now, what he was doing, basically, he was not a trained dr uh, um, drilling person. He hold he held that uh, lug with a uh, uh, with a gripping plier, and he was actually wearing a cotton gloves on both of his hands. While drilling his uh, hand gloves, it was caught in the rotating drill, and it uh, resulted in injury. Now this is the thing which uh, you can just see uh, the drill machine is there, and the uh, you can see the uh, torn gloves uh, that is wound over this uh, drill drill bit. So uh, when the observations, when the investigations went on and it was observed, when the results came, it was established that the risk assessment and the safe work procedure that was already established in the company, the employer or the occupier, he has carried out the risk assessment and the safe work procedure. But the employee uh, was not made aware to the job specific risk assessment and safe work procedure. And at the time of this accident, as we, uh, we have seen from the previous slide, the rotating spindle and the chuck of the drilling machine, they were not securely guarded. That is, the machine was not well maintained. So the lessons learned was the machine, the drill machines, the spindle and chuck, that should have been securely guarded. And uh, as a part of the guarding, machine guarding, wherein you uh, know the physical guards are not possible, you need to have the administrative controls. So uh, like warning notices or signages, that should have been put over there, which was actually, again, uh, missing from that part. So this is one of the practical scenarios, one of the practical aspects which uh, uh, in the most of the um, um, uh, these MSMEs we may find because uh, maybe because of this so so many constraints. So uh, typically uh, such type of a guards, the two examples of guards have been shown here. Uh, one is removable and the other one is a telescopic guard. So ideally 
such type of guards should have been there on that drill, uh, bench drill, which was actually missing. And what was actually compromised? We can just compare cost of securely guarding that machine. Maybe uh, you can see that this is the uh, image of a telescopic type of a guard. The cost might have been around 2,000 to 3,000 rupees. By saving this cost, by not putting on this guard, what actually um, uh, the, uh, the employer has to face was the direct cost of the accident, that is number one, which uh, uh, obviously you can find out uh, from the uh, accounts book like the medical expenses or the compensation claims, the statutory levies. Apart from that, there are certain other costs. What are they? We will just uh, come back to this question mark in the uh, uh, forthcoming slides. Before that, one more case study, the second case study. Here also, the injured worker, he was basically, uh, this industry, this uh, employer, um, uh, he was to carry out a task and he has ordered a, a rod, iron rods of a certain length. But he got the wrong, wrong consignment. The iron rods which were, came to him, they were actually oversized. So uh, uh, taking the production pressure or the time commits uh, commitment or whatever we can say, he decided not to uh, because he had to ship back the rod and get a fresh uh, consignment again. Maybe that will take time. And uh, he decided that he will uh, uh, cut the rods to the actual uh, sizes. So he assigned this task to one of his executives, product executives. Uh, through him, uh, uh, he, got, uh, he decided to get this work done. So uh, the rods were being cut to the exact sizes and the uh, sharpened edges. After the cutting the sharpened uh, edges, the, the burrs were uh, being removed uh, by uh, grinding the face of the rod against the uh, grinding wheel, as you can see from here. And in this, pressure was being applied for grinding the uh, edge of the rod. And uh, uh, the accident that took place, the hand slipped, the rod basically slipped, and the uh, finger of the injured worker uh, that was severed. The observations, again, it was found that due to an urgent need, the occupier has decided to undertake the cutting of the rods. The occupier has employed an executive, product executive, whom this occupier has basically presumed or assumed that he is having knowledge of how to carry the task safely. Now, this assumption part is very much important. Where This is the gap which happens. We assume that since he is of that background, he must be having that competency. We don't fail to train him or to uh, assess his level of knowledge and uh, uh, identify the training gaps. And we don't feel that we should train him because, okay, he's coming from a similar in industry or something. So he might be knowing that. He might be having knowledge of that. And apart from that, Again, the, um, um, the uh, matter of guard, the, uh, the safety guard was not in place uh, on that grinding wheel. So the lessons that was learned from this, that uh, a proper or a suitable equipment should always be selected and used for the required task. This is the, uh, ideally, uh, this uh, type of a guard should have been there uh, as a combination of uh, this fixed uh, and the self-adjusting safety guard. What would have been the cost of guarding this? maybe around uh, 4,500, 6,000, something like that. And what actually uh, the employer had to pay uh, when this accident took place, again, the direct costs are there and certain other costs. Now, uh, I repeat again, the certain other cost, when we say other cost, what is the other cost? Direct cost, yes, I, as I told you, you can find out from the accounts book. But what are these other costs? These costs, basically, we call them as the hidden cost. This is the iceberg theory. Wherein you can see the iceberg, as we all know, only the tip of the iceberg is floating outside the sea level, which we can actually see. But the major portion of the iceberg that is not visible to us, which is inside the sea, that is only uh, known when the ship actually touches uh, um, the iceberg, hits the iceberg. So like this iceberg, hidden costs of accidents are there, which are not visible, which are many times, multi many four times higher than the direct cost. An employer uh, only uh, has to bear the consequences. Direct cost he can calculate, but the consequences, indirect cost, if he's not aware, he, can, he will only bear the consequences after the accidents actually take place. So direct cost of accidents refer to the out-of-pocket expenses. Directly we can find out, but uh, apart from the, the, like uh, uh, this lost productivity of the machine or uh, your uh, loss of a worker's time because of the accident, uh, then uh, maybe uh, you uh, when you uh, when your uh, experienced worker designated worker is not in place 
you will have to find a substitute worker who may be a new person may be not that much experience you will have to pay the company has to pay him over time to make up for the lost productivity and uh, new workers may uh, might be required to be hired and they, uh, they might be required to be trained so all these are the direct cost but analysis of the most of the accidents uh, from all these studies that they have revealed it's a established uh, uh, theory that they have revealed that the actual cost total cost of an any accident is 4 to 10 times of the direct cost what are these indirect costs basically what we are the hidden costs that we are talking of like suppose uh, yes or every company has an investment plan you you uh, every company has a growth plan now having this incident taken place wherein uh, you have never imagined uh, such a thing will uh, happen you have to maybe you are required to divert your invest investment targeted for the company uh, growth to cover up the cost of the accident even every and each and every accident will uh, bring down your employee morale the uh, when the employee morale goes down the employer as a occupier you lose your reputation employee turnover usually it will increase after a serious accident and definitely it will increase after fatal accident the company loses the reputation the company will lose the uh, um, reputation in the uh, in the peer group uh, amongst their, 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 uh, their uh, his competitors the management time that will be spent in dealing with the regulators and again uh, because of the lost reputation of the company the company may not be able to attract the workers uh, at all or may have to pay more so all this thing you have to add to the cost of the accident which are actually the indirect cost which your maybe your account books cannot reflect upon and if the machine is unique maybe it's a special purpose machine you have need to outsource uh, the work at all and if uh, uh, the work is so much specialized that you even cannot outsource it ultimately you lose the business so a poor and a further add to it a poor safety record maybe some uh, companies they, they may have a safety rating system when they place order to the vendors they have a rating system they keep a track on the safety performance of their their vendors and maybe because of that if you are having a poor safety record you may lose your uh, orders or your bids so basically if we try to compare the cost of maintaining a mas machine versus the cost of an accident from all our discussions till now if we try to uh, assume some hypothetical figures so let's assume a fictional company um, uh, who is conscious of safety carried out a risk assessment uh, by a reputed firm maybe Uh, uh wherein each machine uh, risk assessment for every machine costed him uh, around 5000 per machine add to it maybe the particular machine uh, uh he has to incur another 10000 uh, rupees to safeguard that machine added uh, in its prorated share of the risk assessment the total uh, cost the total cost to to safeguard that machine would be around 5000 and this figure will be a figure that compares very favorably to the estimated cost of the accident in fact uh, the insurance companies they have uh, they have uh, uh, carried out certain studies wherein they have showed that majority of the executives they have surveyed they have reported that for every 100 rupees they spent on safety actually 300 rupees were saved and nearly each and every all of them they showed that yes the improving or enhancing the workplace safety it had a positive impact on the financial performance of the company most importantly when you talk of safety safety is biggest return from investment it comes in the form of the human capital money savings from the fewer injuries your increased productivity higher employee morale these all are the additional benefits so if you compare the maintenance cost of a machine over its productive life versus the direct and the indirect cost of an accident it becomes very clear it will be very clear that a good machine maintenance that will make a sound business sense and it should be a cornerstone of any organization safety goal and objectives and these are certain figures um, which i thought uh, would be relevant to uh, uh, in, in sharing in this forum Uh, these are the published figures by dg fastly uh, it is in, available in the public domain uh, the standard reference note published by dg fastly uh, 2021 this is the latest edition wherein the figures uh, involving 
uh, accidents with the machineries that has been reflected. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, basically four categories of machines I have uh, uh, taken out from the figures that prime movers, the machinery where which are moved by the mechanical power or may, uh, not moved by mechanical power and the hand tools. So see the figures, they are substantial in uh, still in numbers. Uh, though with the uh, rate of uh, increase in the number of the registered factories uh, vis a vis the figures, uh, the, we can say that the proportionately uh, uh, the accidents, the number of injuries, they are coming down. These are basically the number of injuries, not the accident, because one accident may result in so many injuries. So these are the number of injuries. So uh, the, uh, the, uh, proportionately they are coming down, but yes, still there is a, a scope and uh, to work the, to improve further the uh, safety conditions uh, in the industries. So uh, that is the basically the takeaway that by investing in your machine, by investing uh, in your machine maintenance, maintaining, upkeeping your machines well, definitely you we can uh, improve and we can uh, financially we, uh, we can prosper uh, the industries apart from the human aspect of an accident. So thank you very much uh, to everyone for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Mr. Roy. That was very powerfully made point. And I have actually made a lot of notes. And I think something that you said in the end, you know, that the return on investment on safety of three times and all those low cost safety uh, ideas that you had in terms of guards and other things, which can deliver those returns direct and indirect was a great point. I would like to now do a little bit of Q&A and if I can request our speakers to be available. We, you know, uh, Chitra Khanna, who's our head of safety has been curating some of the questions from the chat and I'll ask only a few because, given the time. We'll do it for about 10 minutes and then we will try closing it. Um, uh, Mr. Roy, since you are there and before, after that I'll ask Sudipta and I'll ask Mr. Bhattacharya the same question, which is, if the businesses on this forum today and in future, the MSMEs, if they want to take the help of the government or any of these government schemes that uh, Mr. Ivira also pressed upon, how do they go about it? So how can DG Fastly, for example, Mr. Roy, play a role in training or any other things that you do for the businesses? Uh, somebody also gave an idea here that industrial associations should arrange safety training program on various safety topics for MSMEs, Mr. Mukesh Vadgama. So, Mr. Roy, how can how can industry come to you directly? How can you help them in this in this area? Yeah, definitely, uh, we can uh, do in this uh, part, and um, we are already into it. We are organizing uh, training programs. Uh, we have uh, uh, online training programs uh, that is being conducted. Apart from this uh, offline programs, we conduct in front training programs also. If the industrial associations also want uh, in the industrial clusters uh, 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 these appreciation or training programs that can be conducted for their uh, uh, management supervisor uh, and the uh, worker level people. And you do it in multiple languages, right? You can do it in Hindi for workers and others. Uh, yeah, uh, basically, uh, when we are talking to the workers, uh, like uh, since the last uh, uh, one year, uh, we are conducting this Amrud, um, this Amrud Mahotsa program. We are conducting the awareness uh, program on OSH for the workers. So uh, while we are speaking to the workers, yes, we make it a point that we speak in a local language, uh, uh, which the workers, uh, they are comfortable to understand. That's great. And just for everybody's information, you know, we are doing with Mr. Roy and uh, Dr. Elongo a number of training programs for workers in the future. So if you wish to join that, please uh, write to us at team at safeinindia.org or you can write to Mr. Roy and we can come together. So, uh, you know, please give us your feedback. Please join us in those training sessions. Same question for Sudipta Ji. Sudipta, for ILO score program, which you have clearly shown success, what's the plan? How does the industry take advantage of it? I hope you're still around. Uh, yes, I'm still around. <laughs> I was about to just log out. Uh, so um, uh, the score program uh, we are doing um, because it's not a funded uh, program. I mean, we had, of course, subsidized training in some places, uh, almost 115 enterprises we had supported uh, till 2018. Uh, at present, uh, we are actually subsidizing the training only in Andhra Pradesh and Orissa. And I don't think it's uh, the automobile is there uh, that much, uh, but uh, it's with the state government there. And ILO is also subsidizing with some funds from the South Korean government. Uh, 
uh, otherwise uh, it is uh, run through the uh, fikki i mean fikki has is now our national partner so they have been handed over uh, part of the implementation of the training um, and um, they are doing this uh, with a lot of corporates uh, in the supply chain so the corporates are actually uh, covering the cost of the training and also the ministry of msme uh, in their schemes uh, lmcp they had initially they had put it earmarked for 10 clusters uh, but i think the scheme uh, didn't work after I, I think now they have to have another scheme so we didn't go forward with that and then there is another the esdp scheme the i think the entrepreneurship skill development program of the ministry of msme that also had done score uh, using that money so ministry used the score program to uh, I mean, they use the score curriculum actually, and our trainers to do it into, uh, I think, around like 50, 70 clusters, the ESDP clusters. So, um, in nutshell, yes, score is there, uh, but uh, it's always, as you as you all know, the funding, uh, who will pay for the trainers is always the question. And uh, the models that we have is either the corporates, uh, like as I said, the TAFE, Mahindra, they pay uh, for the suppliers. And otherwise, of course, you can also approach Fiki um, if you're not in one of the states where we are operating right now, um, and they will be able to help you guide. That, that's very helpful, actually. We will also talk to Philly, uh, Fiki in that, in, in that case and see and communicate what they can and can't do and maybe scale it up. So thank you for that. I have the same question uh, for uh, Dr. Bhattacharya and Mr. Bishwas, if you're still there. Just carrying on from what uh, Sudhita Ji was saying, that you know, what is Ministry of MSME Q QCI's role in this in lean program specifically? How can the business benefit from your schemes now and in future? Specifically, so, so, we are to OSH and productivity. Sorry. So the, that is right. So uh, the, as I said, that we have we were involved in this scheme during implementation uh, of 2014 to 2019, and uh, the, these all these aspects were dealt, uh, but. I, but we did, do not have specific statistics of what happened in improvement of, uh, improvement of uh, when lean was impl in, uh, implemented, what happened in the uh, workplace safety improvements. So that we do not have uh, quantitative measures to showcase, but definitely we want to do it in the next phase when the next phase of lean comes there. And as you said in the beginning itself, that uh, the environmental, social and governance aspect, the ESG is becoming coming in vogue and becoming mandatory for 1000 uh, uh, industries. So all the, all the more these aspects need to be taken care of and whatever this ILO score has been spoken by, uh, uh, by ILO, uh, Mrs. Uh, Bhadra. Uh, I think uh, we definitely want to integrate all that aspect and uh, ensure that uh, the next phase, uh, all the aspects uh, of uh, safety issues are taken care of. And uh, there is a definitely a, 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 a funded uh, part for uh, lean awareness. And we want to bring these aspects of safety there as well. That's great. I think awareness is definitely a key part to this. And we can definitely work with you and ILO on implementation on the ground. Would Mr. Biswas like to add anything? I'm seeing his name coming up. Otherwise, I'll move to the next question. No, I'm good because whatever he has said, I, I'll echo that. Dr. Okay. Because no, they're dealing good. directly with the scheme and with the ministry also. So they'll know uh, better about these things. That, that's great. Thank you so much. There is another question which I'll ask Mr. Ivy Rao. Um, from Mr. A.K. Arora. Uh, Ivy Rao, sir, are you here? Yeah, I'm there. Okay. So the question uh, I'll ask you, and again, please, any of the speakers, feel free to add. I'm sure uh, Mr. Bhattacharya and, and uh, Sudipta and, and even Mukul would have a view on this. Behavior-based safety is being widely practical in the industry, practiced in the industry. This can be practiced for the MSMEs also. Would experts like to comment on this as to how this can be done? What's the best way to do it? It's obviously covered in what you said, but uh, you know something more specific if people can talk about. So, Ivy, sir, I'll request you to go first, and yeah. then maybe Mr. Bhattacharya, if you wish, or Sudipta, if you wish. Uh, Sandeep, actually, the behavior-based uh, safety calls for uh, the basic study of the reflexes of people who are working on any equipment. Uh, or a system and then decide what uh, safeguards or safety measures are required to be implemented for that specific thing to prevent any accidents. 
uh, actually uh, when somebody is working on say a press uh, what is his uh, impulse instinct when something happens so based on that they work out basic uh, requirements for uh, how to i mean ensure safety during the operation uh, i mean actually if you really i mean if i broad base this question to what's happening on the road also uh, typical indian uh, psyche is to defy what is being asked to like if somebody says i mean if if the rule is that you should stop at red cross crossing when uh, the lights are red or you should not overtake uh, on particular roads etc we always try to find ways and means of uh, circumventing this so i mean actually for successful implementation of these traffic rules also i think we some one needs to do the psychological analysis of how a person thinks about these things and uh, maybe we we should come out with a more uh, well thought of solutions for all these things mm. <clears throat> so is same same thing uh, in the shop floor also basically every i mean we human beings reflect uh, respond to a particular situation in different ways so based on that we need to actually implement what is most uh, appropriate uh, safeguard for that particular application I, 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 i hope i am uh, no no i think it's a good idea myself clear maybe uh, sudipta ji if you can talk about how this is part of score program and how do you deal with this question Uh, sure. yeah sorry you're there yeah yeah can you just repeat sorry i was uh, into no, another no, call uh, this question about behavior based uh, you know uh, uh, safety uh, processes and whether you know your score program how does it include uh, how does it include this this idea um, and how do you actually encourage msmes to look uh, look for behavior based safety practices uh, sandeep mm-hmm. i just want to uh, intervene here uh-huh. one of the good examples though not for safety but I mean, actions based on the behavioral uh, responses is the kaizen activities what are done online actually there mm-hmm. the worker who is actually doing something day in day out Uh, tries to analyze his own actions and work, comes out with uh, uh, modifications to ease his effort right is back to I mean, if you yeah that mm-hmm. basically is being done for improving the productivity or reducing the fatigue or etc so if you translate that to safety requirements that's what it is actually got it so one who has experienced something comes out with a solution how to overcome that problem would be the best solution yes and that's the point i think everybody is making and sarita you made so would you like to add anything to that yeah no so i think already uh, mr rao has explained uh, but and and that is what actually score is all about it in, it speaks about involvement of people uh, but, uh, but uh, so but the and we are actually talking about incentivizing behavior change so it's about behavior change only we are exactly. talking about but the behavior change has to be little uh, assisted you know i mean especially for micro small enterprises they cannot be left on their own and that's what the, was the example from champion um, which actually explained that you know they 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 were already doing something but you know that awareness on certain aspects which probably uh, can um, an external person can bring in uh, you know uh, a new perspective that is something that um, um you know the trainers like whom we call the our score trainers they bring in uh you know the new dimensions uh which is most often overlooked and for i mean 5s is a very big example you know i mean we all know that we have to keep our workplaces organized but still uh, we we don't do it right and a lot of hidden uh, treasures are lying under the 5s under the store in the store rooms uh so yeah. so yeah. these are something things which are common sense but you know it you sometimes need assistance there need assistance need data as you were saying earlier need a bit of management discipline and i think uh, the, i'll just pose this question again to mukul with his practical experience and move to the next question after that and maybe the last question given the time but mukul would you like to add anything to what sudipta has already said from your practical experience uh, sir behavior based uh, safety approach is also a step by step approach just like any other yeah. approach it just takes a different direction it it does require training and the problem with the micro sector 
uh, and and I'm sure you, we have all seen very small workshops and uh, the way they work. You know, one or two people in the admin would be doing would be taking on ten to twelve roles because they don't have ten to twelve different people to to do these jobs, and they cannot be spared for training. They 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 just don't have time to to be spared for training, and that's the roadblock. So anytime we come up with a training mechanism in some of these uh, industry association seminar rooms, you see that the micro sector is always missing from there, and that's where the safety needs to be paramount. You know that's where the accidents are happening the most because mm -hmm. they don't even know they don't have eyes to see where the problem lies. So mm -hmm. basically, I'm, I don't know how this will happen, but somehow training needs to go into the workshops. Rather than getting people out of the workshops into the seminar room, mm, it's a great point. Thank you, Mukul. And, and you know, in, we will do a, at least one another. A, a, we will do several of these webinars, and one of them we will focus on this training aspect. And I think you made a very good point: how to take it inside the factory as opposed to pulling workers out. And maybe there's a right mix of that. So thank you so much. I'll ask the last question in interest of time from Mr. Bhattacharya, Mr. Biswas, whoever wishes to address it. And then hand over uh, for a closing, uh, a quick comment from Mr. Bhattacharya. So one question from Mr. Mukesh Vadgame was, NABIT has environmental consultant approval scheme, but not OSH consultant approval scheme. Why? And is there any plan of that? Is there any thought process on that? Biswas, sir, can I answer? Yeah, you can. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Biswasab in the beginning itself has uh, talked about the various boards. So we mm. have NABET as one board, NBQP as one board, each has a mandate. So there, there is yes. another board called NABCB, which is a board for certification bodies, which handles all the ISOs it is mentioned in the beginning. So this ISO is 45001. And what I will do is I will uh, in the chat box, I will give you the web link of the list of certificates uh, certification bodies which are handling osh I'll, i'm just about to uh, copy and paste it that uh, web link which is giving the list of EA, certification bodies who are who have been accredited by our sister organization nabcb national accreditation body for certification bodies right in osh all these list i can just name a few of them which is bureaus of india bureau veritas tuv and then your IR class. So these are all certification bodies which does work in OSH. Okay, we will progress this discussion with you and that's helpful. So my job now is to summarize quickly the day and hand over to you. There is lots of good discussion right now happening on behavior-based safety and Mr. Mohan, Madan Mohan Khurana, Khanna and Mr. Kailash Chaudhary has some questions and other people are commenting. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but can I request all of you, please, who are engaging so well to write to us at team at safeinindia.org. Send us your questions. Let's get together on some sort of a separate call to discuss some of these ideas with QCI and others to understand what you are saying and thinking, and maybe something good will come out of that. So I will leave that as an action for us. Uh, Chitra Khanna is on the chat. You can write to her or you can write to team at safeinindia.org. So I'll just summarize and I'll, you know, I can't do justice to so much uh, good stuff that has been spoken for the last two hours in two minutes. But I have picked up some important themes uh, uh, and I'll, I'll just narrate them. Uh, one is that clearly all our experts from their real experience, and this was not all theoretical stuff, they are speaking even theory from their real experience of having worked in this area for decades, is the importance of safety. I think intuitively we get it, but the specific instances and examples that they have talked about of how safety leads to higher productivity, reducing cost, better quality, its importance of future growth in this fast changing world, where if we don't professionalize quickly, the world will leave us behind. That's the reality of the situation, micro or small. If we don't move on this journey together, of upgrading our professionalism, I think we have a problem. India's labor productivity today is 128th in the world. There is no way we can make in India safely, better, go down this journey of competing with the best in the world without improving labor productivity. And labor productivity will improve with all these input, inputs that we have received today, making workers work better, making our machines work better, reducing maintenance time, getting the right uh, technology interventions in there, 
uh, the kind of examples that Mukul showed or Dr. Roy showed, right? There was this discussion and subject of government policy and schemes. Ivy sir made the point. I think everybody has made the point that we need to use government schemes better. And I think we need to get a bit aggressive on that. If you give us ideas, we can definitely talk to QCI and others on how these schemes can be either made better or new schemes can be implemented or the right partnerships can, can, can happen. So I think that's an important point. Cost versus investment. I think uh, it was a point made by Dr. Bhattacharya that how lean program with two crore roughly investments and costs created benefits of 200 crores. Now that's a multiple of 100. Whether it is 100 or 50 or 20, it doesn't matter. It's a big multiple, right? So I think we need to use these schemes. We need to, uh, Ivy Sir said, how, high, how accidents lead to high rejections. This is Maruti's experience and Maruti's supply chain experience, right? But for that, we need data. Data on near misses, for example, that, uh, that Sudita talked about. If as businesses, we don't start keeping data, how do we really get scientific about our improvements? It's very difficult. And you know, we have to move out of this mom and pop shop kind of mentality. And we have to make our businesses more professional. And that's the only way we can do that. And that needs assistance. So this assisted point that Sudhita made and the examples that Mukul showed, I think these are important that, you know, we need to assist the owners who have the right attitude, but do not know what good looks like, right? There's a lack of knowledge that Mukul talked about. And this needs joint problem solving. People on this call need to come together People, workers need to come together in a participatory format where we get feedback from them and improve your own shops, right? They know best and that's the fact, right? Uh, we talked about smaller cost initiatives. Mr. Roy talked about the iceberg impact of, you know, we can see some direct costs, but we do not see indirect costs. And that's a fact that everybody needs to think slightly harder about. The numbers are not showing on your balance sheets and profit and loss accounts, as Mr. Roy said. But the reality is those costs are there and our team is constantly looking at them. And again, we need ideas. We need experts. I leave this, this, this forum with the message that I think all of us need to think harder about this. All of us need to communicate more about it. We need to spread the word about it. We will have a series of these webinars. Please invite people you think will gain from it or who you can add to it. And please connect with us so we can build upon this idea, not as a one-off seminar. That will achieve only so much. Our hope is that with the government, Ministry of MSME, QCI, and others, we do tens of these seminars over the next two, three years, where we bring experts together, where we bring practitioners together, we bring best practice together, and we put out in front of you what's actually possible. And it's not just theory, not just talk. It's not only a humanitarian initiative. This has a business driver to it. And I think with that, note i thank everybody on the panel uh, who came together we will engage with you further and request you to come back to talk in further detail and i'll leave it to mr Bhattacharya to do the vote of thanks and close the day uh thank you sir as we close our session i would like to thank you uh thank our moderator mr sachdeva and the speakers, Dr. Indrajit Bhattacharya, Mr. I.V. Rao, Ms. Sudipta Bhadra, uh, Mr. Mukul Bhatia, and Mr. Sumit Roy for enriching us with their deliberations. Before we move ahead to the vote of thanks, I would like to inform that we will be sharing a feedback form in the chat box and would also uh, share it on email. Request everyone to spare some time and provide your feedback with us as your feedback is valuable to us. With this, we move to the end of today's conclave and it's time now for the vote of thanks. May I request Mr. Indrajit Bhattacharya, Director Nabil, for the vote of thanks. Thank you, Pooja. It gives me a great pleasure to uh, propose a vote of thanks for 21st Virtual Quality Conclave. So it has been an excellent session to, throughout the day on workplace safety in MSME enhancing productivity and it has been an excellent association with safe in India we are partners for this program I think there were brilliant sessions in, in all all the sessions that we had uh, right from Mr. CK Biswas to Mr. Sanjeev Sachdeva CEO of safe India Foundation thank you very much for taking your time out and uh, taking us through this very important session on OSH then we had Mr. I.V. Rao who spoke on OSH from Maruti Suzuki. Thank you very much, sir, for giving your time and uh, taking us through 
all this valuable information that you gave. I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Uh, Sudipta Bhadra from ILO for talking about ILO score program, which was an eye opener for me. And we would definitely want to take it along uh, in our new scheme of uh, a lean. Then I would like to thank uh, Mr. Mukul Bhatia from Champion Components to take us through the case study on MSMEs, which has given again a lot of insights about OSH in factory settings and business benefits. I would like to thank Mr. Sumit Roy, Director RLI Faridabad, for giving the perspective of preventive maintenance of machines, preventing accidents and improving productivity. And to thank all of them, we have really be <clears throat> planting a sapling in association with SDMC and giving a certificate of that to all the speakers who have contributed today in this uh, VQC. Uh, I would like to propose a vote of thanks for all the Q entire QCI team, the Safe India team, the NABET team, the IT team uh, of QCI, then the NBQT, NBQP teams, especially Pooja, Ashish, Himali, the media team, Sanjay, Suchit, Shafutkata, Pooja, and Deepak. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all the participants that, who have joined us uh, in this uh, deliberations and who have given us the, their valuable feedback. Thank you very much. We'd like, like to keep associating with you in future. Over to Pujan. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye, thank sir. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Very good.